Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay Earle and I'm the History Programming Coordinator here at the Aurelia Museum of Art and History. And today I'm going to be showing you a very cool item from our collection. In front of me, I have a PIAT missile. PIAT stands for Projectile Infantry Anti-Tank. This was a World War II missile fired from a shoulder launcher that was operated by a two-man team. The Piat launcher was designed by British Major Millis Jeffress and entered into service in 1943. The launcher was created elsewhere, but the missiles were produced right here in Aurelia by the Tudhope Specialties Company at the southwest corner of Colburn and West Street, where Lakehead University Teachers College stands today. The launchers were developed in response to a need for an infantry anti-tank missile that was effective at range. The Piat launcher was 39 inches long, it weighed 32 pounds, and was effective at about 100 yards. This was a great improvement on the previous models that had been in use up until this point, which were neither effective nor particularly ranged. The launcher was more effective, but it did come with such problems as heavy recoil and difficulties with caulking the device. The missile itself is a hollow tube. You can see that there. This would have incorporated two charges, a propellant charge in the tail and an explosive charge in the nose cone. Uh, in case you're worried, this is inactive, so please don't be concerned. The missile falls into the spigot mortar family of weapons, which used an explosive in the missile rather than behind it for propulsion. This did help to cut back on some recoil. The missile is also an effective armor piercing round. The shell makes use of the Monroe effect, which uses a shaped charge to focus the force of a blast inward towards an object. Jeffers was one of the earliest weapons designers to make deliberate use of the Monroe effect. The missiles were constructed in Aurelia, but not loaded with explosive until they arrived near the front lines. The charge was inserted into the nose cone, and then a cap was screwed on over top. You can actually see that ours has threading for a cap, but the cap is missing from our particular model. With most of the men away, the Tuttle factory was run by Aurelia women, who were the ones manufacturing, painting, stamping, assembling, inspecting, and shipping the missiles overseas. The Tuttle factory was shipping hundreds of Piat shells weekly. The Piat shells were used by the British Allied forces, including Canadian troops. Once the war ended and the missiles were no longer being produced, many Aurelia families took the shells and turned them into lamps to use as collector's items. This particular Piat shell was donated to our collection in 2009 by Marcel Rousseau. If you'd like to see more from the vault items like this one, continue to tune into our video series. We will be releasing videos each week on a different subject and bringing a different item out of the collection to display in front of you and tell you a little bit about it. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week.